I want to take a few minutes to explain the difference between a normal LFO, a random signal generator, and a chaotic signal generator. Now from the name chaos, you might assume that it's some sort of really aggressive randomness. But actually, it's a bit more mellow than that. It's somewhere in between random and a normal LFO. Right now we're listening to the effect of a completely random signal generator driving the cutoff of the Moog filter. You see some things are happening fast, some things slow, some things above the center line, some things below the center line. Compare that to a chaotic signal generator. We'll pull down its level a little bit. Where there seems to be repetition to it, but some variations. And a normal LFO, such as the triangle wave out of the Mother 32. Now, normal LFOs are very periodic. For every period of time, they repeat the exact same pattern. That makes them very predictable. Random signal generators, ideally, don't have a specific period to them. Again, you'll see some of the spacings between these waves are small, some of them are large. Also wander above and below the zero line as this continues on. Chaotic signal generators really want to be periodic, but they have a bit of a memory problem. You see where it's on a pattern now. It starts throwing in some variations. It's basically a feedback loop that has some parameter inside of it that makes it a little bit unstable. It stays within given parameters, like a given voltage range, and it tries to come back to that initial stable feedback loop, but it wanders away from it. Now this is the effect of these three different control voltage generators in one dimension, driving just the filter's cutoff. But you'll find that most chaotic signal generators have multiple outputs, and they're usually related to each other in some interesting way. I've switched over to the 2HP VAL module, which has two different parameters to change its timbre. The VAL itself, and then the format for the shape of the focal path. Those correspond to the blue and green traces you'll see in data and the blue and green patch cords. Now, a lot of oscillators do have multiple outputs that are coordinated. Quadrature oscillators are a good example of this. So I might have one sine wave coming out here. You can hear the format changing with that blue trace. And then I'll pick something that's 180 degrees out of phase to change the vowel itself. Now even though we have two different signals, we're creating quite a predictable pattern. And even if we used two different LFOs running at different speeds or rates or tempos, for example, I'll go ahead and grab the Moog's oscillator again, LFO. It can give the illusion of randomness initially, but eventually the ear is going to pick up the pattern that the two parameters are being changed periodically. Now what's more interesting is to use a chaos-based source. For example, I'll use the X output for the formant. And there's that kind of repetitive pattern with variations. And then it's related output to the Y output. There's a degree of coordination between them, like they're speaking, but again, they'll lose the plot. Now this is the most common type of chaos generators. It's called a double well, where basically it's oscillating around two different points. Let me change up the display here so you can see what that looks like. Here's this little XY graph, and you'll see that there's two basic centers that it's circling around, this upper one and the lower one. Those are the two wells, or the two points of gravity, 
that the typical, common, chaos oscillator is circling around, or oscillating around. And you'll see it has a general path, kind of figure eight-ish, but there is variation on that path, and that's what chaos theory is all about. Within predictable bounds, you have randomness or variation. And just for comparison, this is the output of our LFO with two sine waves, 180 degrees out of phase. Just a straight line in the XY dimensions. And we'll go ahead and grab the Moog's LFO for our second trace here, the extra blue trace. And you see, even though we get some interesting spirograph or mandala type patterns, it's not the two distinct wells that we were getting with the chaos pattern and the slightly random yet periodic oscillations around them. Now the fun thing is, many chaos generators even have additional dimensions of outputs. I'm going to take the Z output, I'm going to attenuate it a little bit so it's not too crazy, and run that to the pitch of my little vowel oscillator. Maybe cut that out a little bit. There's kind of repeating phrases in there, then randomness. So that's what I love about the chaos based oscillators. They have that sense of randomness to them, but the multiple outputs are still related. So you can latch onto something, and it's going to take you somewhere else just to keep you interested.